Good evening, everybody. I'm Lois of Sharon, Lois, and Bram, and it is my honor to present to you this evening a brief biography of our very good friend, Paul Mills. Paul was born a long, long time ago in Toronto and raised in London. Throughout high school and later at Western University, he discovered his talent and his love for music. He led bands like the Balladeers, the Paisley Giraffe, and yes, the Windy Sprinkle. He sported nicknames like Fingers and Ned. But shortly after graduating from Western as an engineer, well, let's let Sheila tell you. Uh, he was a chemical engineer and, and worked for Procter & Gamble. And he was the man who brought us Lemon Fresh Joy. I <laughs> have to mention it all because it always gets a laugh. But let me just put it this way. He is Lemon Fresh and a Joy. Okay. I actually developed Lemon Fresh Joy, yes. The competitor, the main competitor was Sunlight, made by Palm Olive. And they had come out with Lemon Fresh Sunlight, and they were killing us in the marketplace. So off, off I go to my lab, and uh, I guess Joy was saved. <laughs> While studying at Western, Paul fell madly in love with a charming English major named Bev Spence. Yes, it was computer dating, and yes, it was 1966, and yes, computers filled a room at that time. <laughs> <laughs> E-Harmony Flintstone version, eh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was little satisfaction for Paul in soap, so he decided to go back to school and get his PhD in engineering. But thankfully, music prevailed. Paul became part of the vibrant London folk scene, which featured the likes of Stan Rogers, David Essig, Willie P. Bennett, and venues such as Smale's Pace. Soon, in a fit of logical planning, Paul figured the best way to blend his skills was to become a record producer. The CBC was hiring. At the time in the 70s, the CBC was doing a lot of recordings of Canadian artists because there weren't a whole lot of Borealis-style labels around, if, if I can get a plug-in. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> He was the first real producer that I actually got to work with. It was way back in the days when CBC used to do what they called broadcast recordings. A year or two later, one of the most important shows in the history of Canadian music hit the airwaves at CBC Radio. It was produced by Paul Mills and featured a well-known host. I'm Sylvia Tyson and this is Touch the Earth. We felt it was really important to get out into the country and, and to meet uh, performers from right across the country where they lived. It did sort of become a central point for broadcasting the music back to the, the, the public at a time when that wasn't happening. If it hadn't have been for Paul Mills, we wouldn't have been able to start the Winnipeg Folk Festival because he gave us the money from his brand new radio show, Touch the Earth. He took a real gamble. And he made one of the most important gambles in the history of folk music in Canada. And that's why we have pretty much most of the Western festivals, is because of Paul's gamble. I think almost single-handedly helped to establish the homemade record kind of movement. Um, because a lot of the people whose music we were featuring could not, would, could not get signed by a label. Mm -hmm. And the only way they were going to get heard is if they made their own records. And we always gave the information. I mean, if you wanted to get a Stan Rogers album, you got his mum's address on yeah. our show. Yeah. And oh yes, Stan Rogers. And I announced to Stan that I was going to be a record producer. And he took a sip of his Glenlivet and said, well, when you're a record producer, you can produce my records. I said, okay. Stan's music and, and Paul as producer are pretty inseparable. He went on to produce all of Stan's music, and Stan and Paul were very much on a wavelength of how they wanted the music to sound. I think Paul pushed Stan to the next level of excellence in terms of recording and in terms of the discipline of the recording process. I also think that he was uh, a fearless critic. Those albums that he did with Stan and Mitch Podolik says this too, he says those are perfect albums. Those were albums that were done in the 70s uh, and early 80s when so much stuff was sounding like they were from that era 
And those albums stand the test of time. They don't really sound like they're from that era. They just sound good. There were some difficult transitions that had to happen initially after Stan died. Whether the music uh, was going to be preserved um, within this sort of precious little place or whether it was going to expand from there. She has sought Paul's help on the other recordings that have come out as they've uh, found, you know, unreleased records and remastering and songbooks, etc. Afterwards, uh, Ariel um, told me that uh, at one point Stan had said that uh, if anything happened to him, he wanted me to have this guitar. So I was just uh, flabbergasted when she told me that and gave me the guitar. Over the years, Paul has earned four gold records, two platinum records, two Junos, six Juno nominations, five East Coast Music Awards, and an Octor Award. And we are so proud to be part of his body of work. It was a rich collaboration. It felt like a real collaboration. It wasn't artists and producer. It was the team of us, the four of us, working together. And so it was extremely satisfying. Our ambition from day one was to make recordings that children would enjoy and their parents and their grandparents and their aunts and uncles and any other adults who were going to be listening to it over and over and over and over again. When he finally left the CBC, and he, he did important work at the CBC as, as I'm sure you know, he came to the studio, we were working on mainly Mother Goose, and he came to the studio and I think we had bought a bottle of champagne to celebrate. And we happened that day to be recording Pop Goes the Weasel. So if anyone listens to Pop Goes the Weasel on mainly Mother Goose, they will hear a pop and that pop comes out of the champagne bottle that celebrates <laughs> the beginning of Paul's enhanced recording career. <laughs> Goes the Weasel. After Paul left the CBC, he made two important decisions. First, he created the Millstream Studio. Got a phone call from him saying that he had decided to leave the CBC and his plans to take a much needed break, but then um, uh, start his own recording business, his, you know, his first love. And uh, I, I'll never forget that phone call. I was so proud of him. I like this. I like the feel of the, the fader. It's just I'm old-fashioned. I can't help myself. Crabtree and Mills is my current uh, creative collaboration, and we've done. We've just completed our third CD. I mean, the original concept was just the power of my voice and his guitar together, interacting. You know, the kind of language that went on between those two instruments. That was exciting to us. Then he joined his friends Ken Whiteley, Bill Garrett, and Grit Laskin in founding Borealis Records. Canada's only folk music label. Paul came into it and I mean it was a wise choice at the time. His experience with CBC and as a producer, being around the music industry for a long time. I, I think that I learned a lot from him, not only as a producer, but in terms of how people collaborate. And interestingly, years later, um, around the OCFF board table, that same type of collaboration and uh, now it wasn't a song that was the most important thing, it was the, the folk music community. Paul served as president of OCFF from 2008 to 2010, taking it to new levels of success. When he was president of OCFF, um, he'd often, you know, bounce ideas that were happening um, off, you know, me or, or my band or other people that were around us. This organization has can help young artists so much and also the young artists can help the organization and we just need needed that person to to bring that together and he did that beautifully. As a grandfather he is he's on cloud nine. He loves all of his grandkids. He's got three of them now. Uh, my sister has a daughter Kelly and now I've got two kids. I got my young boy Wyndham and I got my young girl who's three weeks at this point uh, and her name's Abigail and yeah loves them. I love the man. A well-deserved reward. Congratulations. Paul, I am so very, very proud of you for your great accomplishments and you deserve this award. I, I've always known you've been the best and number one in my eyes, but uh, now the whole world knows it too. Way to go, Pop! I love you very much. So congratulations, Polly. We honor you 
and we love you.